Hello, what is up guys? Evil Do Time here today, back with another Black Desert video. Today's video will be taking a look at the most recent patch that came to Black Desert on December 1st of 2021, go over all of the events, that way you don't miss anything, as well as all of the important changes to the game, that way you can take advantage of them, or use them, or whatever you want to do with that stuff. This patch brings a couple of new events, as well as a couple of changes, including the addition of the new minigame Yar. It is a card game that you can play against various NPCs, as well as other players. Plays exactly like five card stud poker. We'll go through it and show you how to actually play it if you've never played poker before. And since it is actually the first event on the event page, we're going to start off with it. So the event that involves this card game is called Wanna Play Yar. It's got a bunch of stuff in here, which will mean nothing until we actually show you how to play the game. So this video is also going to doubly serve as my instructional guide on how to play Yar, and if I'm lazy, I'll just pull it out and make a separate video. But anyway, uh, you need to go to various NPCs in Valia. The NPCs that can play this game are Eileen, Islin Bartali, or Creo. So those are the three that have this sort of game programmed into them. So I'm going to go up to Eileen, who is one of the NPCs that you can play this game with, and we're going to walk through how it works. So if you go to the bottom right corner, you're going to see the Yar card game option, and it'll bring up a pretty simple user interface. This game plays really similarly to five card stud poker if you've ever played it before, with the exception that instead of needing to get the best hand every time, you need to meet certain criteria throughout a game. So if you hit the start game option, a bunch of criteria are going to pop up on the left. These seem to be random every time I've played, I've gotten a different set. The total number of turns that will be in this game that you're playing are up here at the top left. So there'll be six hands of Yar in this game. Across those six hands, I need to figure out how to meet each of these different criteria. So this one's pretty straightforward. It's five sixes, five fives, five fours, five threes, five twos, or five ones. If you hover over any one of these things, it'll tell you what the criteria is for it. So don't feel like confused that you need to memorize all this. It tells you like nest of fours is gain the sum of all the fours and points. So what does it mean by points? Points are scored in this game based on the total value of all the cards in your hand that meet a certain criteria. So for example, if I was going for like say stack of sixes, and I had three sixes in my hand, that would mean when I turned in for stack of sixes, I would have 18 points because three times six is 18. If instead I had like two twos, it'd be two times two is four points. What you wanna do is try and strategize so that whenever you have a really good set of high valued cards in your hands, so you have like three sixes or four fives or something like that, that are gonna give you a lot of points, you wanna make sure you leave these higher point value ones open so that you can turn in for those higher points and if you have a crap hand, waste one of your lower point values. Like if you had like one one in your hand, but two fives, you could have turned it in for the 10, but you should waste it on the one and try and get a higher valued five to beat your opponent. So there is a timer in the bottom corner. I've talked through two hands already, which is disappointing. Um, so the next one that pops up, I'll play through it and you'll see what I mean when I start playing. So game begins, you draw your first set of cards. Right here on the screen, I can see that I have two fours and that's probably what I'm going to shoot for. To lock into a set of cards, you click on the card to lock it. Then you draw another set of cards. You do this two more times. So I draw in my next set. I got an additional four. So I can take this four and lock it into place. And you can see on the left side over here right now, I could turn these two twos in for four points or I could turn in these three fours for 12 points. So what I want to do is roll away these two twos and hope to get another four. I did not, but that's okay. I'll turn in for my 12 points on the set of fours. So anyway, full fresh new set of games here. This one only has five turns in it. It's ones, twos, threes, fours, and pairs. So if I draw my first set of cards, fives is not an option, which means there's really no reason for me to keep these fives unless I was keeping it for pairs. And realistically, I want to get two sixes for this, not two fives. So what I'm going to do is actually roll all of these a second time and try and get a better, better pairing. So this time I got a couple of fours. So we're going to take the two fours and roll one more time. And yeah, this was kind of a, a pretty, pretty crappy round right here. I'm actually, instead of this, going to waste my one and, and cash in the low pointer because I think I can do a lot better than those on later hands. So that's part of the strategy of this, right? I think I can get a lot more than eight points out of my pair or my, my set of fours. I think I can get two sixes later. So we're on to our second hand here. And as I already had thought, I figured I could do better on the fours. So we're going to go for the series of fours on this one. Save it, move on to the next. Got a fourth four. We got one more roll here left. And it's a four. There it is, which also means that I can complete the event. This is perfect. Take a screenshot of yourself getting the score. Can I just submit the video? Boom, screenshotted. That's it, this has been completed, so I can lock in the four fours here and get the 20 points, which is a perfect score, the five fours for that one. So moving on to the next hand here, I have one of the sixes and then a bunch of fours, so I'm actually gonna hold onto the six and try and get the pair of sixes here. Um, I could save it for the pair of fives, 
Ah, let's go for the pair of sixes. Go big or go home. And he got it. Pair of sixes right there. So that is the maximum value that you can get for mates is two sixes. So we'll lock in that one and move on to the next round. All right, so now I need to get twos and threes. Um, I'm going to save both the two and the three and just see whichever one I hit here. If I get any matches. Got all twos that time. That's crazy. So we'll roll all the twos, draw again, and it's a five, but that doesn't matter. Turn it in for the twos. And the final hand, I'm going for threes here, and there's a couple threes. I threw away one. It doesn't matter. I got this game pretty well locked up, and it don't matter. I'll take my three. So anyway, that's basically it for this game. So easy win once you know what you're doing and, and actually play the full entire set of hands. So um, that's pretty much it for the card game itself. As far as the event, what you saw me literally just do with the stepping tool is you need to take a screenshot of yourself playing the game and getting five of a kind. Post that screenshot in the event forum tab, which is located over here on the page, and this will be linked in the description below. And you'll get an Arcana of Fate box, which gives you a bunch of the different die and stuff that you use for the uh, daily dash type game there, the uh, Black Spirits Adventure. Now, I know a lot of you were probably upset about this event because it's completely RNG based and you have to play the side card game to do it. So you might be tempted to like cheat, right? And click this open in a new tab button here, take the screenshot, put your name over the top of it and call it a day, submit that picture for the easy rewards. I need to make sure that you don't do that, okay? That is against the terms of this event. It says if you cheat in this, any appropriate methods right here, you could have your account banned. And really these rewards are not worth cheating for, right? The only people that are allowed to cheat with their screenshots in this Yar card game are people who work for the game, okay? Because if you look at this screenshot right here, you will see that the score on the left, the only way to get this score is with an ace, a two, a four, and two sixes. And well, if we if we look at the cards, we got the ace, we got the ace, um, but that's not a two, that's not a four, that's not a six, and that's not a six, so... Yeah, I'm probably going to get an account suspension for making that joke myself, but was it worth it? Yeah, I think it was worth it. And like real talk, you know, Black Desert, if you want a legit screenshot, um, I got one right here. You can you, you can have it. Um, it's in the video right here. So just, you know, take a snip of the video. You want the actual screenshot, I'll send it over to you. Uh, I, I got you covered. So moving on to the next event, we have Taming the Dream. So this is an Imperial horse training event. Your boy already has a 15 minute guide on these events. They come around every couple of months. Pretty straightforward. If you do AFK horse training, this is the opportunity to get a bunch of materials to upgrade your horses. Also an opportunity to get a tier 8 horse if you really slam the event hard, although not entirely worth it. Pretty good opportunity to get the Grand Veer gear though for your horse. Um, this is how I got my Grand Veer metal horse shoe several months ago, a long time ago actually. Um, it's a pretty solid event if you're already doing AFK Imperial horse training, although not entirely crazy if you want to go out of your way. Once again, I already have a full on 15 minute guide on how to do this event. It's the same event, they have slightly different names for the stuff, but pretty straightforward. AFK horse train, turn in the AFK horses, get the free crap. This time around they do have another quest, however, that involves taming a wild horse, and this is accepted from the Stonetail Horse Ranch located in Medea. For those of you that do not know where that is, it is the ranch that is located over here to the right of Heidel, so right over here, the Stonetail Horse Ranch right up here. Completing that quest is going to give you a Royal Fern Root, which is used to upgrade the Mythidal Arnanaut. The next event is also horse related. It's an EXP boost to your horse training capabilities. And whenever you do Imperial Horse Delivery, you're also going to get Flowers of Oblivion for upgrading your horses as well. So while you're already doing this event, you can also be doing this event. Pretty cool. The next event, Yaz's Gift, are a bunch of additional quest rewards for completing the various dungeons. So Ataraxian as well as Sakrag blah, 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 blah. I can't pronounce that word. I can't even try. So bonus rewards for completing those two dungeons available in your quest log. Next event are login rewards, so if you go to the escape tab, click on the reward option over here, click on the login reward tab, you will see that there are new loyal rewards. Pretty similar stuff to what we've seen right on along. Next thing is a notice for anyone who has Oasis gear that they still have in their character that has crystals socketed into it. The next maintenance on December 8th will delete all of that stuff forever, so get your crystals out of it if you want to get them out of them. The final actual event is if you want to try and pretend to do your best evil do us harm impersonation and create a guide on the new dungeon, Sakabubudibida. So for the next two weeks, if you write a text guide over in the Tips and Guides forum, they will give the best people that made guides free crap. So um, if you know how to do this dungeon, feel free to. I don't cover the dungeon, so there you go. The final bit of information is that the class reboots are coming on December 22nd. We already covered this in the previous patch notes video. 
So now that's going to bring us into the actual patch notes themselves, and we'll try to move through these as quickly as possible since it took me way too long to explain Yar, and I had too much fun beating it up. But anyway, we went through Yar, we went through how it works, we talked about all that, showed you how to play the game, blah bidi boo bidi bop boop bop Next thing is that the season servers have ended as of today, all of your season quests were completed automatically, your gear was automatically converted, all of those magical things. The next season server is coming on December 22nd, in addition to the class reboots that will also be coming. We already covered all of the different events that are going on right now, so we don't need to spend any time there, and now we can move on to actual content. So, first thing is that there is a new divider that you can place into your mansion, so one of the biggest complaints that I had, and a ton of people as well, is that the rooms felt too big. You can now build dividers in order to block off areas and make separate rooms inside of it, so that's pretty cool. The items themselves are bought from an NPC in Port Etheria Gustok. There's also a bunch of other furniture, outdoor furniture type stuff that you can buy as well from various vendors in the game. The Agris Fever consumption in the Yachman Temple, History of Ruins, and Kurduga Ancient Ruins was reduced. Some mobs in Olin's Valley had a Kaffir Stone increase, the drop rate of the Kaffir Stones on those. And then the big one for the majority of people that watch Evil Do Us Arms channel right here is that the Black Magic Crystal Rate was increased by a ton of different percentages across several different zones. So Gahaz, Waragons, Banshims, Achmans, Road Sulfur Mine, Crescent Shrine, Kadra Ruins, Piliku Jail, and History of Ruins all had increases to the drop rate of Black Magic Crystals. These are used to make the little magical shards that you use to do your pen accessory as well as your pen armor quest lines that are going on right now. So some pretty nice changes to the drop rates there. Also, Black Magic Crystals were added as item drops in the Desert Naga Temple, Tidium Valley, and Kratuga Ancient Ruins. And then beyond that, guys, there is nothing too crazy that you need to keep an eye out for. So, generally speaking, quick recap. The biggest thing from this is the new card game that's out. New card game allows you to unlock some titles, so that's the purpose of doing it. You can also Yar for Spot, I guess now, if instead of Duel for Spot. So, be ready for those YFSs in chat, baby. But then beyond that, some drop rate changes, some different events. Nothing too crazy with this patch. If this video is going to help you, though, in Black Desert, do let me know in the comment section below. And once again, if you're not subscribed, please consider it. It helps to grow my channel, pushing for 1.7 million subscribers. <laughs> it's never going to happen. But, uh, hey, hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next YouTube video right here, next Twitch live stream over twitch.tv slash evildoisarm, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.